Hi guys, I've just done a Zoom interview with Joseph Healy from Judo Bank, J-U-D-O Bank. Joseph Healy is the co-founder and co-CEO of the bank. And this is a, look, you might think it's a bit slow, it's worth listening to that because the objective here is to talk about the bank, talk to Joseph about the bank, to talk to Joseph about the government guarantee for small business owners who are trying to borrow money from banks to get through all this COVID environment. Um, and really what I want to do is talk to Joseph about what's the bank's purpose. This bank is a small to medium enterprise bank. That's it, that's all they do, is lend money to small to medium enterprises. They lend the money unsecured. They lend it at pretty good interest rates. They're not trying to rip you off or anything like that. And we want to talk to Joseph about how hard is it to borrow the money? Is it easy to borrow the money? Who do they lend money to? Do they borrow anyone? What do you need to have in order to get the loan approved? You know, what's their attitude to, towards lending money? Who do I talk to? How do I get in contact with them? How do I, how long should I expect before I get a decision, et cetera, et cetera. So it's worth listening to if you're in small business and you're trying to borrow money. So I recommend it as an interview with Joseph Healy, co-chief executive officer of a new bank called Judo Bank. It's an Australian bank and well-funded. So have a good time, enjoy it. Well, I'm here today with Joseph Healy. Joseph Healy has, there's not many people can say this, he's actually a co-founder of a bank in this country, in Australia, and the name of the bank is Judo Bank. And Joseph also is the co-CEO. Um, Joseph has a long history in banking um, and he understands business banking more importantly. But I guess the first thing I'd ask you, like most people want to know this, why the hell would you go out and set up a bank? I mean, what possessed you to go and set up a bank, Joseph? Well, that's a great question. Um, so we started working on the bank about three, 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 three and a half years ago. Um, at that stage, I was in my early 50s. So that, that underlines why would you want to do something like this? But I felt passionately about banking, and particularly banking for small to mid-sized businesses. And I felt that progressively over the last decade to 15 years, that the service proposition that small businesses were getting from the banks had just been deteriorating. And, and, you know, the banks had other priorities. Uh, they were all pretty much the same in terms of their focus. And I felt that the small business sector was getting taken for granted, was being left behind. And there was an opportunity to, to build a bank that specialized in small businesses only, that was staffed by people who were passionate about small businesses and who understood how to bank small businesses in a way that the industry was no longer doing it. So that was, that was the background. You know, we, we assembled a very strong team, raised, uh, initially raised 20 million, then 120 million, then 500 million, very strong equity investors, built the team out to just under 200 people today, and we'll double that over the next 12 months. Um, so it's, a, it's driven by passion, and, and you know, your listeners, will res this will resonate, that in being successful in business, you have to really be passionate about it. It's not, it's not just business, there's got to be a a strong sense of purpose. What is it that you do that the market's not doing or not doing so well? And how can you make a difference? And success will follow if you get those ingredients right. So it's a burning passion uh, for, for banking and for the and particularly banking small businesses. And how's, how's the take up of it? I mean, so I mean, it's hard to establish a brand because, you know, like it, you're competing against banks that have been in business for 100 years plus who spend, you know, between themselves hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of marketing every year and have been doing every year for many, many years. I mean, how, and so putting that aside, because it's hard to compete with that, but how is, how is the build going in terms of um, your customer outcomes and your customer acquisition? And are, are the customers, how do they feel? What, what, what's the feedback you're getting? Oh, great question. I mean, we're, we've been thrilled with the progress. I mean, we, we be, formally became a bank on the 24th of April, 2019. So we're a, a bank. One year bank, old. One, for, one year old. Um, we've got a, a lending book of just under $2 billion now. Uh, average loan size. Where you've about, lent $2 billion? That, for yeah, those just under yeah, 1.8. Yeah. 1. Right. Uh, with about another 300 billion, million rather, of approved, documented, but not yet drawn. So, and that and that's really grown since since we became a bank. So we're lending at about 250 to 300 million dollars a month, on an average loan size of about two million dollars. Um, so we've been thrilled, and we're we're off have offices in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, and we're opening in Perth uh, in uh, early June 
and then we'll, we'll open in Adelaide uh, early in 2021. Uh, really happy with the momentum. Uh, to the question you, you posed at the beginning, I mean, how do you promote a brand in a world dominated by giants who can spend hundreds of millions of dollars on their brand? Our, our strategy has really been about being very focused and very targeted on who it is we're trying to connect with. Uh, walk before we run. You know, we made some big statements about why Juro is a credible uh, alternative to the major banks when it comes to small to mid-sized businesses. Our service proposition of turning around loans within five working days. Our emphasis on judgment, not formulas. You, you won't find Juro Bank is saying that's against policy. We only do 75% against um, real estate. We'll, we'll take a very judgment-based lens. Uh, we're very focused on understanding what we call the four C's of, of banking, the character, reputation of the entrepreneur, the cash flow, the capacity in the business to service and repay debt, the capital that already sits in the business behind the equity, and then the collateral. Then what security is there? Should there be a weakness with any of the first of those four C's, those three of them? So it's that emphasis on judgment that I think has differentiated us in the market and our speed in terms of making very quick to very quick to get to an answer. We don't mess people around. Uh, decision makers are our bankers have delegated authority, so there's none of none of this. Let me take this to credit and head office, and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. So we've you know we believe in empower, hiring well and empowering people to do the job well, making sure that they can talk to customers with confidence that the organisation can deliver. So our, our marketing strategy in many ways is a slow build. It's, it's being able to demonstrate, certainly in the first 18 months to two years, that we've delivered on what we said we will do. That this is not spin, that this is, this is how we think, talk and act when it comes to our customers. And then we'll have testimonies. We'll have many customers saying, the judo experience was one of the best I've encountered in dealing with a bank for the last 30 years. So, I, you know, and eventually we'll start to promote the brand more in a more public way. But we felt that talk is cheap. Marketing can be quite an empty slogan business. We wanted to demonstrate substance to our track and our track record. And we can and then point to proof points of our ability to deliver on what we said we will do. And I, I guess I know you guys and I know Joseph. And Joseph. Um, I was had to think recently of who is it, which business bank would I recommend to a friend of mine who needed to borrow some money. And ordinarily, I would think of NAB, and I think you were ex-NAB, is that right, Joseph? Yes, that's yeah. right. Ordinarily, I would think of NAB because NAB Business Bank and all sort of stuff, because they've been advertising to us for many, many years. But I, don't know, I thought to myself, you know, but it's a big bank, it's, it's, it could be difficult. Um, and then I, my second thought, but the second name that came into my mind was Judo Bank. And the thing that made me think of Judo Bank is one, I know that's your business, you're, you're in the business of banking small businesses, in other words, lending money to small businesses. Uh, two, the thing that I really, really resonated with me when I first met you some time ago was that if I go to uh, judo, judo Bank, and by the way, it's J-U-D-O, if I go to Judo Bank, as in wrestling, I go to Judo Bank, um, Joseph's, Joseph's organisation is going to make sure that I have a banker who's experienced enough and with a, has enough authority to do the deal. And he's going to hold my hand. He's going to ask me the right questions. He's going to help me out. So he's not going to pass me on to somebody else. I'm not going to get online and talk to three people and talk to the 10th person. And then by the time the 10th person gets in, they're going to make a submission to the credit department and the credit department is going to come back to that guy or girl and it's going to go on forever and ever and ever. And I might end up getting refused and I've wasted a whole lot of time. I think what I like about Judah Bank is they're going to tell you whether they can do the deal or not within five days. Your preference is to do the deal. So if, if your credit, your, uh, you know, your, relationship manager thinks this is not a deal he has to convince others that yep. that deal is not a deal he can't just say oh i'm stuff that i'm not doing that deal he has to he or she has to convince someone else within your team so you really are trying to lend money which is pretty cool i like that i like that so and that's why i refer my friend across to you guys and uh and you know your rates like everybody else's you know you're a commit you're, you're being commercial you're not you know, um, exploitative in terms of the, the interest rates you charge. You're not trying to get them on the low end of the credit curve. You know, so overall, you're 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 a great bank. That's what I think, and I think you've done a fantastic job. And I want to ask you this, Joseph. Right now, the federal government's been announcing that banks have been asked to help small business owners during this period. 
um, for whatever help they may need. Obviously, it's credit help, help in terms of raising credit. Um, what does that mean when the government says, we'll guarantee 50% of the loan? Like, uh, what, what are they talking about? Well, it's, it's a truly unprecedented move by the government, of course. Um, what they mean is that the banks will lend up to $250,000 for working capital on a three-year term, and that should the banks lose money as a result of the customer not being able to pay back, then the government will pick up 50% of that loss. 125 grand. 125 grand. So that's what that means. And, and so that, that is really, uh, the intention of course was to encourage banks to move and to move quickly, to support s small businesses, to give them the cash, the lifeline that they need to survive in these unprecedented times. And the government said that you know, we'll pick up half any losses you might make. So I think that was a very uh, you know, pr profound statement, commitment by the government. The big challenge, of course, has been to operationalize that. And that is that when small businesses want to get access to that $250,000, how do they do it? Yeah. Because a lot of small businesses lost their relationship banker many years ago as the banks industrialized and centralized and had call centers instead of dedicated bankers. And um, so what we're hearing from many, many small businesses is that whilst the intention by the government and the banks was commendable, actually getting our hands on that $250,000 has been a hugely frustrating exercise. Now, we are uh, part of that scheme. So Judo is, is very much a, a lender under that government scheme. And we, uh, you know, being a relatively small bank and, and, and a bank that has a face, so you're dealing with another person rather than a faceless person on a call center, um, you know, we've been very, very quick to respond and provide businesses with access to that $250,000. Uh, what we do say to businesses, though, don't fall into the trap of thinking that $250,000 is going to solve all problems. Yeah. Think about what you really need and think six months, not three months. You know, there's always a temptation, Mark, and you know this, that when we, we hit problems, entrepreneurs being very positive people say, well, actually, this will get better in a couple of months. I mean, I, I say that myself privately, but I think prudently you should say, look, it's going to be tough for six months. So let's, let's think what are our cash flow needs over the next six months. And, and my guess is for a lot of businesses, that's going to be more than $250,000. Mm. So be clear with the bank as to what you really need. So you, you can have access to the $250,000, but actually you might need another $200,000. And so you should also be asking for that. So does that mean then Joseph that you ask for 450, does the government still uh, co-guarantee that or the co-guarantee only stops at 250? Only 250. So there'll be two facilities. There'll be the 250 facility. Right. And then there'll be a separate facility for whatever else the customer needed. And, and when the government says that they, effectively government's sort of being your partner, not your partner, but our partner, the borrower's partner, when he, go, when he or she goes in to see Judah Bank, what does that do? Does it change the credit profile of the partner? I mean, does it really make, I mean, it's comfort for you, for, for Judo Bank. It's a good thing to have the government in there guaranteeing part of the loss. But it does, probably doesn't change the credit profile of the borrower, does it? Uh, no, we, I mean, we've got to look at the customer on its merits. Bearing in mind that this is unsecured as well. So this is not yeah. uh, 250000 which requires a mortgage or a second mortgage. It's unsecured. And so the, the bank's got to really look at the, at the ability of the business to survive over the next six months uh, and also um, their ability then to repay that debt you know over three years now the, the big challenge there's two challenges in this the first challenge is that banks are not very good at unsecured lending i, I mentioned earlier on about the four c's of credit what, what happens in the industry is that they kind of default to the four c and see how much property have you got and will lend 75 percent so developing, having the skills to say, let me understand your credit risk without recourse to property or security is the first thing. And the second thing is the ability to make a quick decision um, so that the business gets the money that it needs. And just the way that the sheer volume of demand that's been placed on the banks and the, the centralization, if you will, or the industrialization of the way they work, 
that's made it very difficult to operationalize. And so, as I say, businesses are finding it quite a challenge getting a hold of the money. The, the thing that I would say, and certainly the way that we operate with Enduro, is that don't spend any time looking at the historical performance of the business, because frankly, that's not going to help you. This is a very different world that we're in. Uh, just look at what the, the, the business manager owner says they need and what they're going to do coming out of this and assess your lending decision on the forward-looking outlook, not the rear window mirror look outlook. Is there a period, if you take one of these lines, there, is there a period where you don't have to make any repayments? Yes. Yeah, so six yes. months or something like, be probably something like Yeah, three to six months, you don't have to make any repayments. And then, then you've got, is it, have you got three years to pay after that or have you got two and a half years to pay after that? Uh, two and a half years. So right. it's three years in total. Yeah, yeah so you obviously, to, Sorry, go on. Obviously, that the government guarantee expires after three years, but that doesn't mean that the credit shouldn't be renewed after three years because if the business has performed well, um, then the, I'm sure that most banks would be willing to extend that facility out, out beyond the three years. Right. So you've got, you've got to pay, basically you've got to pay, let's say it's, 250,000 to make it easy and you've got to pay that over um, two and a half years. So that means you're paying around, um, you know, 10,000 or close enough to 10,000 or $50,000 a month for the next couple of years in six months time. The, yeah. the, the mathematics, let's assume that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you're, you're, what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, we judo bank will assume that the your your economy me the borrower the borrower's economy will recover such that you can afford to pay this ten thousand dollars a month or fifteen thousand let's call it ten thousand dollars a month yeah. yeah and yeah. uh and when you do that are you sort of saying what are you going to say to me me the borrower you're going to say to me mark show me what income you will you think you will earn in that period show me your expenses i know i need to see what your say cash net cash flow is on a monthly basis is that what you're looking for essentially yes yeah. yes and are you yeah, sort of saying be. are you sort of saying um if i if you've got to pay me back ten thousand dollars a month i need to see twenty thousand dollars excess money in your account every month like in your assumptions i mean is do you sort of run to some sort of formula It'll, it'll it'll depend on the individual business, but clearly you want to make sure that the, in taking on new debt, because this would be new debt, yep. that the business is not um, leveraging itself up in a way that it makes it very difficult for it to operate when we come out of this uh, cycle. So I think the important thing is to make sure that, that the business has the capacity to service the debt. And the, the, the ratios that, that will be applied will depend on the nature of the business. But you know the the big priority here is to make sure that businesses get access to that two hundred and fifty thousand dollars at least that month, so that they can survive through this very difficult time. So this, by nature, involves the banks taking on a level of risk that they have been unused to taking on over the last decade or so, uh, and th and that's an important, I think, difference. And that's why the government says we understand you'll be taking on a higher level of risk than you have been comfortable in taking on, and we will backstop you 50% should you lose money on that on that loan. It's a big call, isn't it, by the government? Uh, it's a big call, but the, the reality is if the government didn't do that, the system wouldn't operate. No, 100%. And, and it's fantastic that, I mean, like, you know, we've gone through a Royal Commission and here we are one year later, nearly a year and a, a, year and a month or so later, two months later, where the banks have actually done a, a complete 360, um, and um, you know the banking industry a complete 360 is now looking at trying to help the government and help Australians out in order to keep all the businesses afloat. I mean, why why have the banks done that? I mean, because you know clearly, I mean, I saw some results come out for I think it was ANZ and Westpac this week. Um, no, it was NAB and Westpac, um, and their provision for um, impairment of their assets um, were quite large. So, you know, it's a, it's a big deal to do this. I mean, is it is it like a sense of patriotism or, you know, nation building? What what How was it taken up by well, everybody so readily? Well, I, I think there was a sense that the banks had to step up. I mean, the banks banks have very privileged positions in our economy. They're, a lot of the funding is basically government guaranteed. They are protected from failure. You know, they're, they have a very unique social license. 
um, that, that no other industry uh, enjoys. And so I think this was an opportunity for the banks to step up and show that they recognize that they are, they are, are A, privileged, B, they're critical to the su survival success of the economy and that they should play their role in making sure that they, the business economy and, the, and households um, survive through this very turbulent time. So I think there was a sense of, of um, responsibility. Obviously, the banks have been on the back foot because of the, the fallout of the Royal Commission. So their, their ability to kind of push back against some political pressure was not what it might have been in other times. Um, but I think it can full credit to the banks they, they, and the industry generally. They said in a, all the right things, they made all the right promises and commitments, and they accepted that they are going to take on higher levels of risk than they have been comfortable taking on in the past. But you also need to remember, Mark, that we have one of, if not the most profitable banking system in the world. And it's a banking system that has had very low levels of bad debts um, over the course of the last decade. So in many ways, the levels of bad debts that we're seeing now, whilst are gonna be much higher than they have uh, would normally be, um, they, they are to some extent offsetting a very low level of bad debts that we've seen in the last decade. And the banks are so well placed to absorb these uh, bad debts. They're well capitalized, they're well funded. Uh, one of the banks raised more equity to strengthen its position this week. But the banking system today is very, very strong and it's well placed to play the role that society needs it to play in supporting households and businesses to get through this very difficult um, cycle. Would you be in a position to share with me an example of where you have done one of these um, 250 or some other amount um, uh, loans to a, a small business owner? Yeah, sure. There's a small a small business owner um, in uh, Brisbane that that had been banking with another bank, and we had been talking to them for about six months. They wanted to, they had agreed to buy a small business that was uh, supported the hotel chains uh, in major holiday resorts, mainly around laundry and just general services. And they'd signed a contract to buy this business, and of course then. The, the virus hit and the holiday uh, hotels basically uh, stepped away from contracts and, and because they saw a period of a quiet period lasting out six months. Uh, that small business was in real strife because they had basically contractually committed but didn't have the resources or the revenues to support. Uh, we looked at the, what the business was trying to do and what would it, how it would operate in normal times when things get back to some normality. We looked at the track record of the business owner who'd been in that business for 30 odd years and had an unblemished track record. Uh, and we got behind them and, and even though it was a new customer, we, we gave them uh, a loan of eight and a half million dollars so that they could complete the transaction that they had contractually committed to, um, committed to uh, knowing that the next six months were gonna be a challenge for them but we believed in the, the capabilities of the business owner, that the strategy that they had mapped out to us, and that when things normalize, this will be a very successful business. So we, we stepped in. We, we've had several other examples where banks have pulled back from loan commitments because of this environment. And uh, there was two cases last week, and we uh, went to meet with the customer, met over a conference like this, and we've agreed to step in and support them um, because the track record has been first class. The, the management know what they're doing. They understand the risks. And uh, we also provided one of them with access to the $250,000 facility. So I think it, it's at times like this, relationships are really tested and the experience uh, and maturity is really tested. And good businesses before this crisis will be good businesses after this crisis. And so the important thing is to say, these people know what they're doing. They've got their hands around the risks and the challenges. They're very sensible, heads not stuck in the sand. Uh, and they've thought through some contingency plans should things take longer than six months. So we were able to support them. And, and, um, and it goes back to judgment, Mark. If we, if we were making those decisions based on some formula or some 
you know, how much property have you got as security? We wouldn't have done that. There would be no money available. Um, but we say, we look at the individual as I look at you and say, this is an individual who's been very successful over many, many years, uh, has never failed on his commitments, uh, has got a good business model that will be a good business model after this. This is a chance for us to cement a relationship that will be defining for the rest of that business owner's career. So you just approve my loan. <laughs> <laughs> so, so some might say, some might ask you, well, hang on, there must be a catch to this. Is our interest rate really, really high? In other words, are the, uh, is a Judo Bank charging usurious rates, like unconscionable rates? Where are your rates sitting? Right, right. So across the close to $2 billion of lending that we've done, the yep. average rate on that book is 5.4%. And that's unsecured. So that's unsecured lending. No, no, so, no, so there's a mix of secured lending. And unsecured. Unsecured lending, yeah. That's the average. Yep. So but we don't have any interest rates above 9%. Well, that's ridiculously lending. good. I mean, from my point of view, that's very good. Um, because you know, like people have got to understand, like, commercial lending rates are much higher than residential lending rates, which you know, because there's a risk. The cost of funds is much more for commercial lending relative to residential because there's a lot more risk. But equally, yeah. and, and on, but on top of that, when you say you haven't had anything below uh, above 10% or 9%, um, we've got to remember that those loans are probably the unsecured loans too. Yes. Yeah, and uh, unsecured means, which basically means that judo has got no security. If something goes wrong, you're 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 left out there on the perch. So yes. they're, they're very good rates. They're, they're market rates. They're at their market average market rates. Yes, um, correct. Yeah. So I mean, we we're, we're no competing with between you and them. Yeah, anyone else that is. Yeah. Well, we're competing with the major banks, so we we you know we we we've got to be able to match match them on price. Um, we don't set ourselves out as a a lender who's charging excessive rates. We're, we're, we're in, the, in this business for the long haul. We want to be a credible alternative to the major banks. Uh, and we've got to offer rates and terms and conditions that are competitive. And you're not a lender of last resort either. So I think that's important to, um, for us to stipulate here. Um, yes. You guys are not what, what, what is termed as a lender of last resort who might charge you 20% or 25%. You're a mainstream lender who wants to lend to anybody who qualifies. Is there someone who um, you won't lend to? Is there, is there a, you know, uh, uh, it's a hard question to answer, I guess, but is there any industry, would you say, oh, look, we, we won't lend money to um, hotel owners or we won't lend money to uh, cafe restaurant owners or we won't, is there anywhere that's off limits? No, I mean, the, the, the only thing that we've not done is, is a commercial property development at this stage. But the philosophy here is that we don't have off limits, we, even in bad industries. So, I mean, obviously, retailing, uh, leisure, hospitality are doing it really tough right now. But in my experience uh, over three decades, that even in tough industries, there are good operators. Yeah. There are good businesses. And so I think to take a blanket view on a particular industry is you know, is, is not a sensible approach to business. You see, within all good, when all, all industries, good and bad, there are outstanding performers and we'll, we'll look at businesses on their merit, not on, on the, some blanket approach to an industry. Which big, I mean, I, I, I think it's fair to say big banks actually take that view because they have to take that view in some respects because they're getting so many applications they can't sit down and make the judgments like you guys can because they don't, most people don't have the authority to, to make the judgment in the first place. And you probably would remember, you would definitely remember this from the NAB days, like across the board, they just say, look, here's an industry and we're not going to bank at the moment. We're not going to bank uh, clothing retailers because it's just too hard from to pick out those individuals like you're talking about who are of great character, of have great track record records, who have good business minds and have faultless histories it's too hard for the big banks to find those people because, the, as you said earlier, the banks, the big banks have become industrialised because they're so big. That's correct. They can't operate the way you're operating. You're operating very niche um, and, you, and you can actually have a proper 360-degree look at your customer or potential customer before you make a decision. Yes, 100%. I mean, the, 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 you know, I've, I've worked in big banks, not just NAB. I was at ANZ and I've worked in other banks. Um, there's huge machines and, and, you, and you have to have a one-size-fits-all cookie-cutter approach, otherwise you can't manage them. 
and, and of course, there are several layers between the senior executives and the folks on the, on the front line. And you've got to be very clear about we're, we're not going to do this sector um, and we're, or we're not going to do this or do that so that there's no misunderstanding. And of course, people at the front line feel disempowered. You know, their, their ability to look at a customer and say, I know you're a great customer. Personally, I'd write you the check myself if I had the money, but our policy is we're no longer doing this type of business anymore. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. policy changes in six months' time, of course. But, but we we set Judo up as a pure, small to mid-sized business play. Uh, we don't want to do anything other than small to mid-sized businesses. We want to be world class at doing small to mid-sized banking, uh, and we have staff here who are passionate about it. That's all we talk about. You know, it's, it's we're not a big conglomerate that talks about wealth management one minute or. China the next minute or personal credit cards the next minute. All we talk about in South Juro is how do we help small to mid-sized businesses survive this phase of the cycle and then succeed coming out of it. If I'm a small business or a medium-sized business and um, I felt as though I needed access to 250, half million, whatever the number is, what what do I need to prepare before I to make the, the process easier and faster and less friction? What do I sort of need to have in my kit bag before I um, make an appointment with one of your um, relationship managers? Well, so you need, you, need, you need to have um, an outline of, of the, the business plan, about the, of the financial forecasting for the business with the profit and loss, the balance sheet and the cash flows. Uh, a clear statement about why what the well, money is one year's worth. Uh, just because I just uh, it's better. It's better to do two, two to three years. Three, three I, years. I know that forecasting is a black science and a black art as well. But, but you know, it's it's good to kind of think out two or three years as to what how the business is going to perform. Yep. Um, what it is you're looking for and why. So I want to borrow two or three million dollars and, and I'm going to use the money to invest in whatever it might be. Uh, and, 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 you know, some evidence around, you know, the, his, the, the recent history of the business in terms of its financial strength. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it. Then, you know, the, not, nothing, no 20, 30 pages of documents, four or five page statement, financial statements. Uh, we want to, we always want to meet with the customer. I mean, we, of course, in today's environment, it, it's using the medium that we are using now uh, so that we can have a good chat about, their values, their philosophy, what they're trying to build in life and the business, how they think about the risks. Um, but that's always better done in a conversation rather than written down because you can you can answer and ask questions. Uh, and, and you're there to help not trip people up. I mean, 99.9% of businesses are not in the, in the business of preparing financial statements for banks. So they need, they need some help. And this is where the broker community, of course, plays an important role because it helps bridge that uh, the gap that exists between the way that the business thinks about its business and the way that the bank needs it to think about its business. But we make it easy for people. You know, we don't want to make it hard. Um, we, we promise a decision within five days. If we can't do the business, we'll say it immediately, you know. But if we, if we but our, our going in attitude is that we're here to lend to small businesses and you can always find a way of lending. It might not be exactly what the customer has asked for, because sometimes you've got to say, look, for this to work, we need this. But there's that old Woody Allen line, you know, waiter, this isn't what I asked for, but it's what I want. And so, you know, sometimes businesses ask for something and actually the better solution is something else. And then but that's and a conversation. How, how do the businesses access you? You mentioned brokers, because a lot of people might not, you know, there's not, we don't have a judo bank on every corner. So, How's the best way for people to, apart from your website, is, I, I guess is judobank. What is your website? Judo Bank, judo.bank. So judo. Judo. Bank. Yep. Yep. that's it. And then if they want to call you, there's obviously phone number, phone number on your website. Um, and yep. when they call, do they get a call center or what happens? Who, who's going to. No, there'll be, someone picking, there'll be someone there to, to, to speak to. I mean, we're also, we're, as I mentioned earlier, we're in Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane right now, Perth in a couple of months. So we've got offices there. We've got bankers there um, who, you know, so find the telephone number. The telephone number will be on our website and call the offices. 
uh, and you'll, you'll speak to someone and that person will be available to meet with you via, via through this medium or in normal times to come and visit you. So, I, I mean, my, my business, Yellowbrick Road and Vow, have a relationship with your judo bank um, and um, we have a, a relationship through, through Georgia Beat. Um, maybe you could explain how borrowers or small business owners or people, medium business owners, I mean, how they might use their mortgage broker to talk to you guys, how that might work, how that interface could work. Well, they, they, you know, they, if there's a relationship with a mortgage broker, ask the broker to introduce them to judo. I think that's the... That would be the easiest way to do it. I mean, we have relationships with, with uh, thousands of brokers around the country. There's also thousands that we don't today have an established relationship with, but you know that might be an opportunity also to open up that as a relationship channel as well. But I think if, you, if you're a small business, you've got a relationship with a broker, ask them to put you in contact with Judo. Um, they'll be able to find Judo quite easily. I mean, we've got a big team of people around the country, as I've mentioned. Um, and we are the specialist in this business. You know, it's not even though we're a young bank, uh, the average experience of our bankers would be close to 20 years. You know, there's, we, we hired people who've been very skilled and experienced in, in banking SMEs um, who believe passionately in supporting SMEs. I mean, they go through a three hour test before they get in to the organization to test their skills after having gone through four interviews. Um, so you, you'll find a banker when you, a judo who is, is passionate about small to mid-sized businesses, understands the issues, understands the right questions to ask, is there to help, not trip up, um, and will give you the right guidance and feedback and information requests that you need so that you can process your loan requirements. And um, I mean, you're a Scotsman? And uh, yes. I've always said, if I was going to own a bank, I'd want a Scotsman running the joint um, because they're the best bankers in the world. It's, it's well known it's in banking industries. Um, I, I want to congratulate you because it was one year ago you launched this business. I remember when you launched it. Um, and I remember having lunch with you and some of your colleagues maybe some months before you launched it. And um, it was a pretty exciting proposition at that stage. Now it's, it's real and it's out there. And you know, for some reason, I mean, to some extent, to be frank with you, um, this pandemic has fallen into your lap because the people who are affected mostly, um, apart from consumers, are business owners, small business owners, and um, they need help. And yes. that's what your bank, your bank is actually, Judo Bank is actually there to help people. It's not just a transactional bank, it's there to help people. It's, they're not trying to do your, look after your wealth or their insurance or your, your check account or your credit card. You're there actually to lend money to these business owners to, and you're taking a, a holistic view or, or a 360 view of everything in relation to the business. And, and as you say, you, you guys are well experienced. I really appreciate talking to you. I think for me, um, if consumers, business consumers are looking to borrow money, um, they should definitely have you in the top three of their list in terms of who they should be talking to. Um, because it's rare that you get an organisation who actually will try to lend the money if it fits. And, yes. and, and that's, that's your game. Because if you don't lend money, you're not going to make any money. Yeah. So you, yeah. you've actually got to lend money. We've got to lend money. We've got to do it in a way, though. What, 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 the, the, the nightmare scenario for me, Mark, is to wake up in two years' time, look in the mirror, and all we are is a mini-me of the big banks. Because yeah. we serve no purpose if we're a mini-me of the big banks. We've got to, we, we've got to go back to the fundamentals of, of business banking that, that, that used to exist you know, a decade or so ago when there was a banker that business could speak to and that banker had some authority. Uh, he or she could sit down and, uh, and understand the business properly um, and make sure that the bank was tailoring its solution to the business's needs rather than saying to the business, look, here's the proposition, take it or leave it. Uh, and then the customer, the business customer says, well, I'll go to another bank, but actually there's not, mu there's not many, much difference between any of the big four. Um, whereas you'll find with Juro that as I've said several times, this is all we do. This is a, SME banking is our bread and butter. It's a way that we, you know, we think, talk and act all day long. Um, we want to build our business to be a very credible, We'll never be the biggest business bank in the country. That's not our, our, our um, aspiration, but we can will, and will be the best business bank in the country. 
because all we will do is specialize in providing SMEs the support they need to grow and, and to do it in a way that it makes it easy to do business with us. Many easy years ago, many years ago, and, and I, this doesn't necessarily have to be about banking your answer, but many years ago, probably at least 10, maybe 15 years ago now, um, a journalist asked Don Argus, who was the boss of the bank you worked at, yep. um, what keeps you awake at night? Given what's going on at the moment, this is not a, really a business question. It's just what keeps Joseph Healy awake at night? What, what, what worries you most about what's going on? All the things you see, you know, for the future, COVID, economies, what keeps you awake at night? Well, what are you most worried about? Uh, I'm, I'm worried about th uh, that we talk ourselves into a problem that we can avoid as a, as a society. I mean, we're... There was, we were quite rightly um, very concerned about what the COVID virus, the COVID-19 could mean to the health and society. And, and, and the business issues were a second order issue because health and safety was the first priority. Um, you know, that, that was based on a world where we didn't have any facts. There was um, story, stories coming out of places like Italy and China, but we reacted as we had to react. But I'm worried that we, we stay too long in this state of emergency and that, they, that we impose costs on the society and on the economy that are far greater than they really need to be. And so I work, at the macro level, I worry a lot about that. I, I feel that we've not, we now have enough information to start adjusting the approach to the whole, um, you know, to try to control the disease and to start allowing biz the business community to get back to doing what it does well. Uh, so I'm, I'm concerned first about all about that. The second thing, on the flip side of all of that, I, I, I would hate to wake up in three years time or even in a year's time, frankly, and look back on this period and feel that judo has wasted a crisis. And, and I don't want to sound mercenary when I say that, but I see this as a, a huge opportunity to demonstrate the real value of judo. And you talked about marketing at the beginning of this conversation, but if we hold true to our promises to small businesses, we hold our nerve and we're there to support small businesses, then no amount of marketing dollar could ever uh, provide us with the reputation that we will build over the course of the next year. So I don't want judo to waste the crisis. And, and that's, you know, that's the other thing that worries me. Are we, are we brave and bold enough Sensible bankers, this is not reckless, but sensible bankers who are backing our customers in a way that I don't feel the banking system is in a position to do, given all that it's having to cope with um, during the, during, in the face of this crisis. I, I quite like that. Just, just to a business owner, that old saying of don't waste a crisis, um, during crisis, you can get 10 years of brand building done in a short period of time. Um, and if you don't waste the crisis. Um, and that Correct. applies not just to your bank, but to any, any business, I don't care what the business is. Um, some businesses will turn this crisis into 10 years of brand building in, in, in a six month period, and they will leap ahead of their competitors, which given that's your attitude, um, that's a great attitude. Actually, it's very refreshing to hear a, a banker say that. That's very well to hear a banker say that. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate Thank you. it. I mean, I'm, 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 as you, you, you know, Mark, I'm passionate about banking. I mean, even it's saddened greatly by the reputational damage that was done to the industry. But fundamentally, banks are critical and, and, and they need to be responsible and understand the role that they play in the economy and society. And they need to be professional. And they need to, particularly at times like this, stand up. Uh, not hide, stand up, not hide behind marketing slogans, but stand up and allow your actions to speak for yourself. And that's, that's how we are looking at the current environment at Judo. Let's get, let's, get, let's get out there, support our customers, and also reach out to businesses that are not our customers and say, look, if, if you're looking for an alternative and finding it difficult to get a cut through uh, it with your current bank, then give us a go. It's um, it and this discussion with me in six months' time, I'm going to revisit this, and um, maybe or early next year, I'm going to revisit this because 
my gut feeling is um, you're going to push through this very well. Can can you buy shares in Judo Bank? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Well, I mean, no, everyone who's listening is going to be jumping off their seat at the beginning saying, "How am I going to? I don't want to borrow any money. I just want to buy shares in Judo Bank." Um, but well done. Thanks very much. I really appreciate your time. That's been awesome. That's Joseph Healy, co-founder and co-CEO of Judo Bank. Thanks. Hey, very thanks, much. Mark. You bet. Great. Cheers. Thanks, mate.